eggs, so I gotta go out to the chicken coop. Get some fresh ones. Hello. What are you guys doing? You guys have any eggs here? I'd like to, to trade. I can trade feed. I just need eggs. I ran out of protein, powdered protein, and so all I had was oatmeal. So if you guys have eggs, then I can just use those. Well, that's pretty disappointing. Uh, not really sure what to do now. I'm really hungry, and there's no eggs, and the chickens don't want to take any responsibility for it. So <sighs> here we are. I edited most of the morning, and that afternoon I went out to see my friend Andy, who's a physical trainer. I've been having shoulder pain when I work out for about two years. I guess it's impingement. And I've just been powering through it because I don't want to halt my progress. When in reality, I've been making it worse. We all have scenarios like this where we know something isn't right and that we have to take action, but we come up with excuses and rationalize the easy way out because it sucks to deal with it head on. I hate these weird rehab exercises, but I've decided it's time to finally deal with this and move forward. And then it was time to pack up for a hike in the White Mountains with Brendan. He picked me up at around 11 p.m. <laughs> What up? <laughs> what? You've already got it all set up nice. That's Bronson's bed. The wind is what's gonna suck. Right. We're gonna be fine, but once we get a true line, this will be 40 mile per hour continuous, so. I'm happy with 17 miles, so. Are you serious? It's that bad? Oh. Sorry. I might, I get like 19. <laughs> we drove through the night, no sleep. Where would I put my Sambo? My mom made me a roast beef Sambo. <laughs> oh! I put it in my side pouch. Ooh. I had no idea Brendan had invited our friend Jack, so now we had a solid trio for our 3 a.m. departure. So he couldn't find his crampons. Do you have snowshoes and your crampons by chance? What were you going to wear? I had snowshoes, and I was going to wear my... Uh, my your your bikos? Yeah. Can you wear your snowshoes? Because yeah, I left my snowshoes at, at uh, what's-her-face Jess's. And I yeah. thought he brought his, but, but I think he. I don't do bring it much of anything. <laughs> I brought hand warmers for him too. <laughs> well, I count on you for that. <laughs> I also brought a urinal for him. <laughs> a what now? It was a little bit icy, but not too bad. Oh man! I bet these things just had three inches of ice all at the top and just. The serenity of hiking through the night puts your soul at ease. And once the sun starts to peak up, it gets hard to distinguish dream from reality. We surfaced above tree line to 40 mile an hour winds blasting our face as the earth came alive. It was so windy that it was hard to hold steady, but my God, I've never seen anything like it. Ice wind rolling and swirling just a few feet away from the side of the mountain, while the first light of the day reflected rainbows in the crystals. You want to talk about feeling alive? Watch the sun rise from the top of a mountain. even worse on the way down, and as we submerged back into the trees, I remember a hike we had done last year. 
The snow this year was nothing like it had been. And as we walked, I thought back to that fantasy marshmallow world last February. It was an Instagram meet where we hiked Mount Pierce in New Hampshire. There were ice crystals everywhere. And the higher we got, the more unreal it seemed. I mean, this is what the North Pole is like, right? Up there, on top of the world. You get lost in your imagination up there. I can tell you that much. How is this the Northeast? In New Hampshire? These places don't exist in real life. You'd be surprised what you can find when you look around. Chances are, just a few hours away from your home, there's something you had no idea was there. A place just waiting to take your breath away. And all you have to do is take the time to go find it. And back to reality. So which tree are you going to buy? Which tree? For Christmas tree shopping, right? Well, yeah. Which one are you getting? Well, yeah. Maybe that one over there, yeah. Holy smokes. You know, I brought my drone, my full-frame DSLR, a GoPro, and my point-and-shoot. I always spend all my energy, focus, and time trying to capture the best of everything in every way. But on this hike, all I ended up using was the point-and-shoot and I just kept it in my pocket. As you know, you don't need the best gear to capture a moment, to create a feeling, to tell a story. Because if a story's worth telling, any way you can bring it to life is going to be just fine. So we started our hike at 3 a.m. and got back down at around 10.30. We were sore as hell and absolutely starving. And if you've ever had a similar experience, you know that thousand calorie meal afterwards is probably the closest thing to heaven you'll ever get. <laughs> Eggs Benedict with home fries and a side flapjack. One of my go-tos. And don't mention the four cups of coffee. A great experience with great people in the books. But it was time to get home and rest up. Because the next morning I had to meet with a guy I've been talking to for the past few weeks about music. And just like the damn shoulder pain, it's about time I stop pushing off what I know is right and take it head on. I'm making an album this year. There, I said it. And I'm gonna stick to it. But first, a hot shower. (laughs) 